Western Spain Television. Ours it is. All right, uh, good morning and thank God it is Friday. This is the last one for this week. Femi Ojo is my name. Thank you for joining us all week to do what we do here. That is conversing, having conversation, serious, deep one, sometimes uncomfortable one, you know, about issues of public importance. That's what we do here at this time. You know, speaking to critical stakeholders, you know, decision makers, opinion moders, everybody involved in these projects for Nigeria towards making it a better, you know, and a working nation. The kind that we are proud of as the reason, essentially, why we are here and why we do this at this time. No holds bad. Nobody's ox is being God on this program. It's all about the project called Nigeria. Good people. Great nation, as I said, it is the TGI, TGI edition rather, and of course, we'll be speaking, uh, you know, to somebody in the know about the topic of discussion for today. But first of all, as we usually do, we start with the papers. But then, Evelyn, yeah, good morning. Good morning, Femi. Uh, good morning, people. Welcome on board. It is Friday, and you know what time it is. You know, it's my best day of the week because Fridays are actually days that launches us into a proper weekend where we get to groove, where we get to party and of course relax, douse the tension and prepare for a new week ahead. My name is Evelyn Ohiola. It's the 12th day in the month of April 2024 and we are again grateful to God for life. Welcome on board. It's such a delight to have you. Yeah, with us absolutely and of course when she said you know what i mean is is morning spring o'clock that's, yeah. that's what the time is right now we start with the papers the papers are in and of course you don't want to miss every tiny bit of uh, the headline i see it in a major daily for today we take a box to the back Also, uh, trusting the daily trust, uh, you know, with what it asks for us today. A couple of headlines there, boldly written as this first one. No personal interest in 15 trillion era coastal highway project, Umahi. And with riders, Umahi is the minister for works, by the way, procurement that didn't follow due process. Atiku insists. You remember, Atiku spoke on this matter especially these uh, lagos Calabar uh, coastal highway that has been planned, uh, you know, a couple of things. The federal government responded. The Minister of Work, uh, Works, rather, Dave Umai, responded on different, um, you know, forum that he seems Atiku is insisting, like he, there is something that he knows that he's saying. This thing is not the way it's supposed to be. There are a couple of names that have been, you know, um, thrown up to be the winners of uh, that particular bid, and these are persons that have been alleged to our personal relationship with Mr. President, by the way. And so he's saying procurement didn't follow due process. Article insists, and Whitenobu is linked to Chagri family. Uh, these, that is one of the talking points, the Chagri family. And, um, you know, the early day continued into yesterday but then today's working day right now mm. officially working day <laughs> you should be on your way to work if you're money duty right now uh, you know you don't get too used to it but the children you know having fun in this particular paper the pictures are there but below that disco post 37 apologies to ban eight customers in one week mm. good to recognize that you are you know falling short of your agreement and you're apologizing but does that you know does that do the work does that suffice to, thank you does that suffice for the kind of unit you are i mean the kind of band you have placed them on and the billing system that is it if the agreement is we give you premium light 
and then you pay for this amount. Now you are not giving them that premium light. They are still paying for the amount on that particular band yeah. and you are apologizing to them. You know. Apology doesn't cut it. I, I, I believe that compensation should do it. That's, that's the right that's way it. to apologize. Exactly. Actually, I agree absolutely with you. You know, it's led for the people on band A <laughs> to really see to that because for most of us around here, you are not too sure the kind of band Tom has said your own is abandoned. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> All right. But so much for band A, really. Okay. Um, a, B, D, C, N, back CBN suspension of dollar collateral for Naira loans. And I have no reason not to support APC-led government, Bochi governor, and on that sad incident uh, that took the life of Junior Pope and um, I think one or two other persons, mm. uh, that's the, you know, um, death on the Annam River. AGN suspend movies involving boat rides, Musawa Man, that's the minister in charge of art and entertainment, money, that's that incident. I did, you know, many persons believe it was preventable, mm. by the way. We killed many terrorists in Zamfara. NAF, right? Bulgarian envoy orders attend Sala Doba in Casina and condolences at first Abia civilian as first Abia civilian governor Ogbonaya Onu dies at 72 years. The news mm. you know, came in yesterday and Ogbonaya was just like we are read here, the former Abia uh, governor. And of course, uh, he was a minister under uh, uh, President Mohammed Bari. I think for science and technology. Yes, for science and or, or technology. Uh, yes, passed on. Yeah. And uh, he also aspired to be the president of Nigeria in the last uh, election, general election. You yeah. know, he was part of the Aspirant. contendants uh, at the, uh, for the All Progressives Congress before uh, President uh, Bola Ahmed, or then uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu uh, was able to, you know, clinch onto the ticket. Uh, right. Uh, back then, so he, he, he has lived a good life uh, for 72 years, and um, we can only say that uh, God will comfort his family at mm. this time and also be with the family that he left behind. Right, and that's all on the front page of the Daily Trust. All right, from the Daily Trust, we move over to Nigerian Tribune. At this time, uh, governor's agreement with Tinubu casts doubt on PDP's future. Uh, with the riders, stakeholders unsure of new party chairman. Six days to 97th neck meeting. All eyes on elders, leaders to rescue PDP. Here's there in the People's Democratic Party. Tussle for leadership. Away from that, Lagos Market Inferno. More buildings will be pulled down. This is according to Governor Sangwolu which is actually expected because um, some buildings may have been weakened as a result of uh, that inferno that happened yeah. in the Samu market some days ago. Um, more headlines here on the front page of Nigerian Tribune. Nigeria under attack by foreign invaders. Northern Christian elders raise alarm. Mm -hmm. Gilbert Paul, PDP holds local government congress in Ondo tomorrow. And uh, Chinda heads electoral committee. Olubadon stool or Lakunle expected at Kingmakers meeting today. Olubadon stool or Lakunle expected at Kingmakers meeting today. And Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway, that particular project that has elicited uh, some controversy, especially between the presidency and uh, the candidate of the People's Democratic Party in the 2023 elections, Waziri Atiku Abubakar. Okay. FG extends ultimatum to affected property owners by seven days. Project will only remove 15 meters of landmark beach shoreline shanties. Uh, this is according to Omahi, and it's highway to fraud, waste. Atiku insists. It's as if... Uh, Waziri Abubakar knows what he's talking about, right. and um, they say he who alleges must, you know, should prove. Yeah. And um, the people are waiting for him to actually prove what he knows about this particular project. Mm. Away from that, LP releases document weakling NLC's power over party. 
And uh, lastly, Tinubu Buhari others mourn as Obonaya Ono dies at uh, 76. Uh, this is according to the Nigerian Tribune here. Uh, that will be all uh, on the front page of Nigerian Tribune for today. I mean, Nigerian Tribune has it 76. Some other papers has it at 72. 72. So you right. may be wondering which is which, but I've seen more of 72 than 76 this morning. One thing is sure here that um, it's not confusing. He has passed on and he has, you know, lived a life, quite a long one for himself, mm. really. And that is the end of every human, either one, either ten, either the metuse like kind of age, nine, whatever. Still have to go. Yeah, you must live here <laughs> mm. one way or the other. But make it count. Let's make it count while we are here. Yes. And of course, part of making it count is why we are here. Doing this at this time. Vanguard newspaper is next. Vanguard newspaper. And um, quite a lot of stories here. Uh, Lagos, Calabar, Coastal Road, Uproar over cost as federal government proposes 3,000 naira toll gate. Okay, you know. And the minister in the news chat yesterday said these may even vary. This is more like an average, uh, you know cars might pay you know a reduced fee to that and why articulated vehicle might pay you know much higher, uh, fee, much higher fee than these so possibly it's just uh, playing it safe here and it was quite um, you know categorical when he was speaking on that particular project because many persons you know the opera that has trailed that particular project Lagos Calabar, the landmark beach um, angle to that you know we wait to see how this pans out. Um, riders here say it's cars to pay one five, trucks 5,000 naira, Umai. Says landmark resort, jobs won't be affected. Good to know. Property owners to be compensated. That's standard procedure, by the way. It's a highway to fraud and waste article. And federal government not tired of inflicting pains on Nigerians. There's a reaction from the Labour Party. Any toll above 300 naira, unacceptable. That's coming from the CUPP. And uh, luxury balls of Pretos Kik says passengers will be at the brunt. And road may become highway of exploitation and fraud. NLC and cost must be recovered. On Willie Motory supply alternative road, APC Scribe. Interesting. Some reactions to this project that is even yet to kick off really many concerns that should be looked into really and some will at the sumun market fire site um, um he is, was there yesterday that's the ems man in lagos about the day uh Ulushola. Sonwolu. director of lagos state fire services mrs margaret adeshe governor sonwolu himself special advisor to the governor central business district bola Ulumegbon. During the governor's assessment visit to the Dosumo Market Fire incident in Lagos Island yesterday, and the governor has said no building that has that failed structural test that will be you know left there. Mm. Everything must be brought down, you know, to save the lives of the people. In as much that building fails uh, structural integrity, and Okwama Army, you know, before we leave this particular evening, you remember we talked about. The, I think this is high time we started talking about taking safety important. Mm. What should people know? What should they do? Number one, to avert, you know, some unnecessary things. And if, for adventure, this thing happens, what should they do? I bet it, more than half of the people, doesn't even, even if they have fire instigation, I'm not sure many persons know how mm. to even operate. Yeah. But that's very key. I, I'll be, you are not even sure if actually, out of 10 shops, you might not see four that has by Gusha, you know, depending on the kilogram of how, you know, the measure is, we should start this conversation. And we said it yesterday, you know, as an offshoot of the junior pope's death again, and we should begin to talk about what is important yeah, right sure. now. We should not just be a, a negligent, you know, a senior colleague, Ruben Abati said, we're a negligent nation. We throw everything with chances. We're more, we're more reactive than proactive. It is when right. issues happen, that we try we, to come around and, and say, well, should have done. 
And after just weeks after that we particular on. incident dies down, we move on like nothing ever waiting happened. Waiting for the next one. Waiting for it to happen again. And we'll converge again and start conversation. React, and when that, It's like a, a normal cycle. cycle. And it's really we not going to help us as a nation. I agree with you, Evelyn. An Oklahoma army invades another Delta community, arrest Penn, raises homes. We just hope this thing... You must do what you have to do. We learn sitting is ongoing right now about these Oklahoma Oklahoma issues and the killings of the officers and men of the Nigerian army in worry. The sitting is happening, but then whatever they are doing, they should do, but it must follow the law. That's mm -hmm. one thing, so that the humanitarian aspect of these doesn't get messy and messier. But it I. Manufactured goods import rise to 69%. The so 9 trillion era exports decline. Okay, that's not too good when export is declining. We must be doing more of exportation than importation, by the way, to strengthen the era. On the sporting scene, or seamen close to accepting PSG's 17 billion era per season offer. Did I hear well? Am I saying well? 17 billion naira per season offer. Wow, wow. Yeah, I think we must. I don't understand the way you're repeating the headline is like you want to Evelyn, drop your suit like, to take on the boots. Like, What's happening? I'm, not, well, I'm, I'm sure maybe it's too late right now. Where do I start from to start training for football right now? But we should have a review of career path at this <laughs> okay. point. Okay, that is if money is uh, the SI unit. You know, that's just an lighter note. Seventeen billion. That's a lot of money. Um, the thing is, politicians won't have that if they don't go. You know putting their hands in the jar of the people in the treasury, that's quite a lot of money. Yeah. All right. And um, why we go, why Ogumbanjo's family sued charter company over helicopter crash? The minister apologizes for saying Nigerians keep freezers on due to low tariff. That was uh, Minister Didibu because people took him on, really, that Nigerians consume anyhow. They want to go out. They keep their freezer on. And many persons are asking if I'm being metered. How is that your business? Am I not paying for that? Yeah. If somebody's a mortuary and um, you know embalming places, that means when they are leaving in the evening, they should put off their power and allow people. <laughs> I mean, it's my I'm paying for what I'm using. That, it's it. not like I'm using that's it your, on uh, you know a yeah. credit or something. So I feel that statement was really not necessary. But you Highly know, unnecessary. our public office holders, when they just want something to say, they just say everything that mm. comes to their head yeah, at the, the time without even filtering what they are saying because not even shaming the vi victim you are mm. actually shaming the nation mm. that's what it is uh, the people are the victim that's what i mean in this they are it's, not having that light it was so unnecessary yet you are rubbing something speak. on their face that what you guys are even consuming really am i the one consuming or you people mm. maybe yes. we should pay the house of minister de debu a visit and we Adelabu. see <laughs> sorry at the labo and we see how he and his, and his colleagues use this particular power they are talking about without paying. Because it's the people that pay for these people in official capacity, by the way. At Top Street, Tinobu Jibrin, Kalu Uzadima will be others mourn as Ogbonaya Onu dies at 72. Or Dili declares for a leader of PDP in Rivers. Evelyn, I know there will be reactions to this. Mm. And Junior Pope, how Fanta money I spread in the river. Safe to me, that is from. A survivor named Cho, Cho Chukwu Okafor, you could see his picture there, is the one, you know, one not um, cladded in this particular picture that has the late Junior Pope and the owner of that particular project, that's movie producer Adama Luke, who has been suspended right now. And um, Audily declaring Fubara leader of PDP in Rivers. Evelyn, you know, there will be a reaction. Of course, and we we'll wait to see. Of course, there will be reaction. <laughs> there will definitely be reaction. All right. And um, you know, it's expected from an orderly to a Fibara yeah. because knowing that uh, uh, Peter Odili and uh, uh, the minister of um, FCT, mm -hmm. who was former governor of the state, yeah. they are not really in good terms politically. So, but they have been in good terms. Oh, I've seen, I've seen right videos now. where uh, Minister Wiki said that uh, may may something happen to him or something. If he, if, he, if, he, if he speaks about Odili in a bad way. The same, the and same I, and people are bringing out the videos. Okay. That he even said the day he leaves the PDP, something, something must happen to him and the rest of 
politician. The same we that said there was nothing that will make him come close to APC, mm. who is now a minister in the APC administration. Maybe I mean, he trust, has come close to Tinubu, not trust, the APC. Trust politicians <laughs> at your own, you know. Peril. You know, it's, 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 it is what it is. They it say is. something and they forget <laughs> about it. They see another thing next month, they forget about it. it. They just speak in the spur of the moment. That's it for me. And Evelyn, if you are going to do your job and ask Minister Wiki today, maybe, or, you know, politicians and say, why did you say it at this time? They will throw it back at you and say, you are the one. I interpreted it to, to mean contest. that We way. are used to this thing. <laughs> All right, let's take on the, the last paper for this morning, the punch newspaper at this time, the punch newspaper, Lagos Calabar Highway, FG plans compensation in nine states, puts costs at 15 trillion naira. Tinubu orders payment of compensation for, proper, for property owners in Lagos, Aqua Ibam, seven others. FG extends eviction notice for property owners. NSE says project will improve states' economies. And uh, away from that, uh, we can see the wreckage caused uh, by uh, the fire at the Inferno at uh, the Simu Market some days ago. Government shorts the Simu Market. Sanwolu hints at building demolition. And away from that, uh, make your robot teaching language in Southwest schools, uh, says Afeni Ferry. And uh, Junior Pope, AGN suspends Riverside movies shootings, please lunch probe. Uh, Navdak burns turkey made soap, tracks fake Indian injection uh, powder. Uh, and I actually think uh, this is necessary. This is more of the things which you'll actually hear from. Uh, Nafdak. Uh, the top corner of the front page newspaper this morning, Nigeria's oil production drops again. Now 1.23 million barrels per day. This is according to OPEC and you can find that story on page 20 of the Punch newspaper for today. Law to terminate many cases at appeal court, appeal court coming. Uh, this is coming from the AGF. Attorney General of the Federation saying that law to terminate many cases at appeal court coming. I hope uh, this is actually um, uh, good enough because uh, a lot of people uh, feel sometimes the appeal court, appeal court rather, do not get this right. right. And um, they seek redress at the Supreme Court yeah. and they feel, okay, we have hope at the uh, Supreme Court. But now if many cases will be terminated at the appeal court, we mm. know what or we knew what happened in uh, Plateau yeah. State, you know, the, yeah. the case that cost a lot of, mm. generated mm. a lot of controversy. If not for the Supreme Court, for the governor, yeah. probably he would have been removed unjustly. The same tsunami will have. Exactly. So Sweet. we have to look into this very critically. And we go Ogumbanjo's family sues U.S. firm for helicopter crash. I have been expecting this, mm. actually. I have been expecting this. And... Why the family is doing this, I understand. And I, I think it's not um, something out of um, the norm. Mm. It's some, if it was in the U.S., if this was a U.S. citizen, I know that they would have sued uh, that company for yeah. what happened, whether it's for negligence or the fact that uh, you know, one of their uh, 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 products or one of their helicopters claimed yeah. the lives of their family and loved ones. And Sanu Nasi berates minister over off pay promise. Okay, that will be all from the Punch newspaper this morning. Uh, okay, let's see. Sanu Nasu Birate Minister over half pay promise. Amazing one there. We cross our hands to see what happens next <laughs> with uh, this one. Sanu Nasu, when it comes, they do not, they don't agree. Mm. You know, the uh, slogan for this year, at the beginning of the year, was no grief for anybody. Absolutely. Even though it's kind of a bit dying down. People no longer have time to keep repeating that no grief for anybody but the at the time is, even was... the economy no grief for anybody. exactly so, you know it's as simple I, I i heard of uh you know an explanation from the government saying uh, that sanu and nasu that are saying they have not been paid the arrears you know the four months that was paid to out of the eight months the four months that was paid to um asu members mm -hmm. I think there was an explanation uh, that um, they, I think from the Minister of Education or so, uh, Tahi Mama, that they were not on strike at the time. It was only ASU that, that, that were on strike. And so why would you be claiming? But the thing is... Were if, they paid or not? If they were not on strike, yeah. 
within the period at which um, you know ASI were on strike, the ASI yeah. officials were mm. on strike, were the Nasu and Sanu paid? That's that's it. If they were not paid, that and means they, they are, are being owed. That means they are being owed. So it's not if you're saying they were not on strike, mm. but you refuse to pay them mm. because nothing happens in the university, then it's they contradictory. You to payment. Exactly, it's contradictory. That that's that's a good place to leave it this morning. Another program will be looking at something it's about governance, politics, you know, the third force, the fourth force, even the fifth force. If there's anything like that, we need all kinds of forces that were bandied around uh, before the, during the electionary campaigns, uh, the last cycle, 2022-2023 cycle. But then where are we right now? It's about uh, the people and it should be about the people. And by the way, it is said that democracy is uh, the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Is that the case right now? We we'll find out from our guests uh, when we come back. It's the morning spring on Western Spring Television, uh, you know, blazing loudly and clearly, you know, on uh, Channel 100, on uh, Star Times, uh, DTT, and also on our YouTube channel, Western Spring Television. We'll be back. All right, um, you're welcome back. And um, just like I said uh, before we took that break, uh, the conversation is about um, governance and politics, by the way. We know politics, especially political parties, are the vehicles that everybody seeking office in this country uh, must go through, must go by, must ride in, in as much as our laws doesn't give uh, opportunity yet yeah, to independent candidates see you, you know uh, so the political party many persons believe um, he's not really serving beyond getting to power talk about the ideology do we have any political party who has a standout ideology here in Nigeria not just by what they profess or either you are a progressive or what or you know you are a you know, somebody uh, or party that is big on welfare, popularism, and the rest of it. Now, from 1999, I'm talking about in our recent history, till now, many parties at the time we had almost 93, 97, uh, before many of them were deregistered to what we have right now. In the last elections, a couple of political parties beyond the two, you know, the PDP, the APC came up and they did very well. Talk about the NNPP uh, that was spearheaded at uh, the presidential election by former Kano Governor Rabi Musa Kwakwan. So, and of course, the Labour Party uh, that the presidential candidate was at the time, uh, former Anambra State Governor uh, Mr. Peter Obi, they did well. Many of them got them um, federal, uh, you know, uh, law making seat, by the way, at the federal level, at the state level, and many persons believe, okay. And then you, we had, you know, that uh, particular cliche of third force, fourth force, and the rest of it. So one of those parties uh, that really did well, uh, more than six million votes at the presidential election was the Labour Party. You know, their slogan, Papa, Mama, Pekin, you know, big on welfare. They have been in the news recently, especially after the elections, for the wrong reasons. And this is what I mean. It's about one challenge or the other, and many persons are thinking, are they really serious? To really be the thought force that many persons are seeking to be an option to the beat you, the, the APC and the PDP. And the presidential candidate, the movement of the, uh, the guys called the obedient movement, and all of it that played out, the dynamics. This morning, we'll be talking about the challenges that is bedeviling that party and many persons think maybe the Labour Party is not really ready, that what of things at the national is big than regional politics or state politics or just one, you know, just a one-off.
kind of performance. Nigeria is quite a dynamic and interesting place. We have been joined this morning by a former House of Representative um, candidate under the same Labour Party, especially for the Geisha South Federal Constituency, uh, Mr. Gideon Aloba. He's in the studio with us. Thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, thank you for having me on your program. All right. Thank you. Yes. Um, let me confirm. You are still with the Labour Party? Yeah, of course. I'm All right. So <laughs> let's start from here. It seems your party is about to implode. Is that right? <laughs> Uh, I would say no to that. Um, yeah, the Labour Party is going through a process of growth, growth. which which happens. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, normal with every I mean big party. You have rancors. You have um, people fighting for the soul of the party. So nothing has changed. It's it's a normal process. Normal. You yeah. know what you call normal. It's really normal in the context mm -hmm. of what the parties have always been from 1999. Really. And many persons, the big wigs, the money bags, trying to put their interest, you know, lay claim to power, be the one to dictate. But during the last election, many persons saw, and you agree with me, that maybe the Labour Party is the one that would do things differently. That, um, you know, and uh, by the way, the word on the street at the time, the reason why some persons want to vote or wanted to vote for P2B, which they did, by the way, but, you know, uh, it was the majority vote that took day was that they feel he is more of that was you know the word on the street more of um, the lesser evil by the way that if you place some candidates on a pedestal maybe it will be is more less than you know of an evil than the others if you're gonna understand the context now with all these things that we are hearing allegations of um, uh, you know the chairman embezzling funds some persons you know, being in charge of the party, not do things rightly. And you say it's normal, Mr. Loba. Is that the normal that your party wants to continue with as well? So That's so, why I had to paint that scenario. No, no, so, so um, it's a whole lot of things. You said a whole lot wrapped up in, yes, in one just now. Mm. Uh, like I mentioned, I said the party is going through a process of growth, and you would agree. Um, um, His Excellency Peter will be coming into the party brought the party to limelight. Yes, Labour Party has been in existence for, say, 20 years, or there about 22 years. Uh, before now, uh, Labour Party had the governor, or the person of um, um, Mimiko in the state. And ever since then, there has not been much activity until um, Peter Obi came in. Uh, so, well, yeah, I can say the victory the party had in the last election was uh, courtesy of um, Peter Obi. But one other thing you need to know is uh, His Excellency Peter Obi coming to the party brought a whole lot of fame and power to the party that uh, maybe some of the handlers, you know, had a little bit of issue handling. I mean, we, we are here to, to speak the truth, so yes, a please. few years. Yes, so uh, Obi coming into the party brought a whole lot of, you know, you know uh, things into the party. Some of the handlers could possibly who do manage, you know, the whole, uh, you know, should I say fortune they brought. So maybe that was what led, in, led to some rancors, you know, that happened. But above all, like I mentioned, when you're going through a process of growth, you will have, you know, all this bit of issues happening there and there. But at the end of the day, I believe the party is going to come out better and stronger. Yeah, two things. Um, you didn't answer one of my questions. Those mm -hmm. things you term as is normal. These are the normal that people that are wanting the alternative doesn't want. They are tired of that kind of normal. People struggling, this is my own, I'm the one here. So, and when you try to call people to power, it's happening within your party as well. Um, the big wigs, people are saying, be accountable. Tell us what you are doing. And the big wigs are trying to call their bluff. This is not just leave me the way I'm doing things. That's number one. Is that kind of normal that your party wants to continue that many Nigerians are tired of? And number two, you said it brought some things that some persons that Mr. Peter will be couldn't handle. Let's be explicit here. What are you talking about? Okay. Um, politics is politics. Um, like you mentioned, um, there is no independent candidacy in Nigeria for now. So if you want to vie for political office, you still have to go through the vehicle of a political party. Um, so when you're running for election, you have different kinds of people that will show interest. 
and you have to still do it the you know the proper way going through the primaries uh, the primary is supposed to try the best in the system, but you should also know that um, the people manning these parties are all Nigerians, be it APC, PDP, or Labour Party. And um, I think there has been this stereotype in the Nigerian space before now. Um, you have to possibly throw a lot of money into the political process to emerge as candidate. I can tell you this happens across the party. I mean, that's, that's just the truth. Um, but the Labour Party was the alternative because the Labour Party had um, little or no baggage. I mean, that was the truth. Going into the election, we had a candidate people could resonate with, which, um, you know, which led to the massive support we got from the people. So our, our party was popular with the people, and um, which was the reason why we did very well. I don't want to talk about the results because whether you like it or not, Labour Party members feel otherwise about who won the election. But I mean, we've passed that stage and everybody's looking at um, how the country is going to work. Now, um, so I don't want to say um, Labour Party has done things wrongly. I would still say we are managing the crisis very well. I'm also not going to say everybody in Labour Party is, um, is every, everyone around us is a saint or everyone around us, you know, would get things done the perfect way. Politics is about managing people. You have people of different um, characters. I won't tell you all our members are saints, but you just have to manage it and make sure mm -hmm. this, yes, I mean, that, that's just the uh, truth. Lover, I'm not going to sugar. I have three instances now. Okay. You've told her what you will now say, okay. what you will now say, okay. what you will now say. Okay. What will you say? What are you saying this morning? Because you have been so, talking about what you won't say. What are you saying? Yeah, so right Liberal now. Party is still the it's a thought force. I mean, it's still the, the party of the people built on social justice. Um, it was, uh, you know, uh, let's talk about history. It was mm. founded and established by the NLC. Mm. It's meant to be the party for um, the workers, you know, where everybody can take ownership. Mm. You know, so you do, we don't want to leave politics in the hands of the established politicians so that we can do things differently. Right. And by and large, uh, irrespective of the downside, the little things you've mentioned, I think we still stand out. Mm. Mm. We still stand out as a party. You call it little? Yes, there will be challenges. There it's, are humans. It's about consuming your party. You call it lethal. So, so, so this is it. I, I'll say this again. Um, I may not totally agree or support the leadership of the party with what is presently happening. I feel the party is bigger and greater than any individual. If we feel the leadership is casting maybe shadows on the party, I feel they should step aside so that new management can come that would portray the party in, in a positive light. Okay. Because the support we had in the last election was from the people. Yeah. If the people withdraw their support, Labour Party won't be what it is. I mean, what it was. You know, once we lose the support base, we won't be where, where we're coming from. And going forward, we would not be anywhere near, you know, the fortune we are looking at, I mean, I mean getting. So I would say it again. Um, I'm not totally, you know, I, I don't want to take, to fall into any side of the divide right now. Mm. But I can just categorically tell you I'm not happy with what is happening. But that doesn't mean the Labour Party is uh, by any form, you know, going down or, um, should I say... Uh, you don't think the popularity that um, Labour Party enjoyed in the last election had way, uh, has weighed? Has went down a bit. Uh, like I said, we're going to manage the crisis, you know. Um, we are still trying to find a solution to it. The NLC is involved. I mean, you know a lot has been happening, trying to take over the leadership. But the bottom line is this. We are trying to, you know, um, restore the, the honor and the dignity of the party. If there are individuals or any leadership that is casting shadow on the party, we are trying to see uh, maybe we can reach a truce. Either we tell them, okay, maybe you should just step aside while we try to have a neutral leadership. Now, I'm not trying to take side right now, but we have an issue at hand we are trying to resolve. And I'm sure in, in not too distant time, we have everything set to it. It seems you do, you, you do not believe in the Julius Abure leadership in Labour Party. Is that it? Uh, I have friends at the, at the, at the national level. Uh, I may not agree with everything happening at, at, I mean, presently. 
Um, okay, so I'll just tell you my own view. Yes. Uh, okay, so this is it. Um, we feel we are losing the, you know, the support, you know, we got from, from the people uh, because there are a lot of, you know, allegations, accusations, mm. counter accusations happening. And I feel, this is my own personal opinion anyway, if you have so much rancor and complaints happening outside, there's honor in stepping aside till everything is resolved. If we've criticized the, you know, the big parties for the same reasons, some of them holding on to power even when the public opinion does not favor them, and we possibly have that repeating itself in our party, I don't think it's the best, you know, right now. So um, I feel the honorable thing to do may be to step aside when the whole process, you know, trying to, you know, get to the root of the matter is happening. Then another thing that we are all talking about, some of the stakeholders anyway, is to strengthen the party. We should have um, maybe um, the Congress from the world level to the national level, uh, because at the end of the day, it is the people that makes the party. When you don't have people who are represented from the world to the local government, to the state level, then you possibly would not have um, a true reflection of the wishes of the party members at the national level. So, so it's, you know, I, I'm just trying to, for now, let's find a truce to all the brewer happening and we can, the stakeholders can sit down to have a, a solution to the crisis where we we'll still, you know, be with the masses, with the people who supported us through the last election, because without them, there is no party. And like I always say, Labour Party is bigger than any individual. If I were to if, imagine me being a national chairman or being at the NWC, on the NWC, and we have crisis, and I think um, I'm losing the support of the people, the honorable thing to do at that time for someone like me would be to step aside. Okay. If there are, you know, maybe accusations hanging on me, mm. I give them time to, I mean, to resolve it. If it's resolved and they feel, yes, my record is still okay, I can still come back to the seat. Okay. Yeah, I, okay. I mean, we saw that in the last, uh, build up to the last election by uh, Dr. Donyo Kukwe, uh, exactly. where he actually resigned his position as uh, the chairman of the Obidati campaign, the director general rather of the yeah. OPDAT campaign. Before we move to the leadership tussle in uh, Labour Party, you mentioned that you would prefer for there to be ward congress in yeah. different wards and in different states so that, you know, we can know that it is the people carrying the Labour Party. I'd like to ask how strong is the Labour Party at the grassroots? Because people have said many times that the Labour Party is carried by the Peter B wave, you know, at the, from the center. And so there is no much foundation at the grassroots uh, for Labour Party. And that's why all this crisis, crisis is coming up at this time. I, I want you to answer that question. How strong, really, is the Labour Party at the world level, at the, you know, uh, uh, constituency level, and what have you? Maybe, Evelyn, we should just say the way people are saying it, like Labour Party at the grassroots, they are non-existent. Your thoughts? Okay, to be, to be sincere, I would say, to some extent, I agree with what you just said. Mm. Um, we need to enhance our membership from, you know, the world level to the national, which is why one of the reasons why we have the rank called presently going on in the party. It's, it's everywhere in the media. And I'm sure you've had some stakeholders speak on this issue, that to strengthen the party, we we'll need to know our membership strength, build it from the grassroots up there. So there's one other thing I would like to chip in. And it may be a bit controversial. Political parties in Nigeria are not entirely different. That's the hard truth. Most times it's about the candidate the person of the candidate they put forward that makes the difference. The last election, I would say it over and over again, Labour Party enjoyed that much support because of Peter Obi. Mm. Yeah, that's the truth. I mean, I won't come here to sugarcoat things. But then doesn't like, that make us 
building people and not building institutions that work? Uh, you know, um, Nigeria is a, a really a bit of a peculiar, uh, you know, um, you know, space. Too. Yes. Those who play party politics, there, there, there's, there's been a template for party politics. That's still not going to change, whether you like it or not. Mm. Be it Labour Party, NNPP, PDP, or APC, there's a template that's not going to change. If you think there's another template, you'll be lying and deceiving yourself. I mean, that's just the truth. Labour Party was actually established for good reasons. Mm. I mean, so you see, I'm a member of Labour Party. I, I went to Labour Party because of the values the party had. It's a party founded on social justice. It was founded by NLC, you know, for the people. They have good manifesto. This is what I believe every worker, you, everyone should join because it's actually a party for the people. But don't get it wrong, the party will still be run by politicians. Mm. You need people at the grassroots, the established politicians that will take the structures and do things, you know, the way it's been done. But I feel um, we need a lot of participation in politics. If you leave politics to the politicians, you're not going to, you know, have things done differently. But when you have good people, you know, new people coming into politics to change the narrative, go by the constitution of the party, get involved from the, you know, the world level, which is what the stakeholders are pushing for. Let's build a truly strong and um, a truly strong party where you can have structure. Like, I'm, you know, like, I mean, that's what you were talking about when you talk about world level, the real structure. Yeah, structure um, it goes a long way, plays the positive role in Nigerian politics because you need people to pass the message from the grassroots, you know. So now, so there are two things that will work. When you have a good candidate, a strong candidate, a viable candidate, and you have a good structure, it will work together for good, which is what we are pushing for and which I believe would achieve in not too distant time. This push for participation at the world level, how yeah. is it coming up? Like, what kind of support is it getting, especially from uh, the stakeholders in your party? Because um, people say 2027 is not far. Yeah, it's not so far. you are supposed to get your acts together that's what we in are preparation doing. Deep for clean, deep that. Clean sin. That's what we are doing. Whatever rancor, whatever battle happening is for the soul of the party so that we can get it right. I, I mean, I, from time to time, I discuss with stakeholders across states. And what we are all fighting for is to have a truly strong, you know, party that does things differently from the established party. You understand? If we don't do this, whatever you're seeing happening, if we don't do it, Labour Party will be like every other party. Nothing is going to change. So if we do the, the in-house cleansing, mm. get the right people to manage the party, you know, build it from what hop there, would have a truly, like, a, a, the kind of party that reflects the kind of change you want to see in the country. That's what we're trying to do. If we are not going together, then most of us will not stay in the party. I, for one, will not stay in the party. So we are pushing, we are trying everything we need to do to get a truly different party. And, uh, and we are in the process. So if you hear this rancor happening right, you know, front and back, right and left, we are fighting for the soul of the party so that we can have a, a different party, something different from the established, you know, political structures, the established political system we've had you for a long time. You have said the political parties are essentially one. That is what I'm saying. And that's why we're fighting for the soul of the Labour Party to do things differently. Mm. If we don't do what we're doing now, <laughs> I will tell you, I will come here to tell you in the next few months or next few years that PDP, APC and, Lib and the Labour Party are the same. You said getting the right people yes. to run the party. Yes. How many persons we say, um, the party, um, political structures, government, homes, they are still a product of the society. Yes. So what would be your definition of right people? Where will you get those right people So we are from? doing a lot behind the scene, getting, you know, uh, people in. When I talk about people, I mean, amongst, like, if you are this, 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 is, this is an organization, you, if you're a member of the Labour Party, you know people within your organization that you can recommend. You talk to people. We bring good people, honorable people into the party. We are doing a lot behind the scene. If we feel someone does not reflect the ideas of the party, we'll push from within, we'll push the person out. No, sing, no single individual is bigger than the party. Mr. The Mr. national Mr. chairman is not bigger than the party. Th that was what no. many persons thought you were doing before the election, and which resonated with the people, many persons who identify with that party. But at the sniff of power, you are not even in power at the national 
just some few lawmakers, maybe a state governor, and at the sniff of power, Labour Party has come out to just be like the same of the, I mean, the same, the rest of the political parties. Let's be just as the sniff of power. Let, let, let's, please, is let, let's, let's be specific here. When you, say, when you say Labour Party, mm -hmm. don't, um, Labour Party as a party, does not really have issues, but some of the people managing their affairs. The people is the party, isn't it? Yes, I know. So we can't, um, and that's, you see, you mentioned it, that a lot is happening within the party. Mm -hmm. And from, you know, from what you hear everywhere, the, you know, the accusations, counter accusations, you'd see that there are people within the parties trying their best to cleanse the party. If they fuel anybody, or there's anybody in the system that does not reflect the ideas of the party, there's a lot of deep, um, deep cleansing happening. Just give us a bit of time. Okay. We'll, we'll resolve these things and get it fixed. Uh, all right, Mr. Loba. Yeah. Uh, you know, there have been a lot of issues with the Labour Party have we, as we have established this morning. First, it was the leadership tussle between uh, Lamidia Papa and Julius Abure. And then we moved over to the embezzlement that happened, that, you know, allegations of embezzlement also with the leadership of the party. Then uh, the friction between the NLC and uh, the Labour Party. Do you think, because there are some theories out there that this might be um, an injection of bad blood from other parties. Some people feel probably it's some uh, uh, big wigs in APC or PDP sponsoring this bad blood in Labour Party just to destabilize the party so that there will not be a third force that we had in mm. the 2023 election. You've spoken well. Like, I mean, um, I agree to some of the things you said. So. Let's say, hypothetically, the uh, Labour Party is a great party that would take us to the promised land, the kind of, you know, government we desire to see. If those on the other side see Labour Party as a good party, a party that um, has the support of the people, don't you think there will be politics that will sponsor people to destabilize the party? If you're not good, nobody, during the last election, how many parties had a kind of, you know, you know, prayer like the Labour Party? But do you think that's what's happening with the Labour Party? That's why I asked no, the question. No, during the election, yes, to some extent. Yeah, there were, there were, there, yeah, what you said actually happened, to the best of my understanding. So, during the election, we were distracted. So, that's why you had factions coming in. Then after the election, people were fighting for the soul of the party. Mm. Some were personal, you know. Most of these battles are personal battles. You, you won't take humans away from politics. The, 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 the party will be run by people. And sometimes these people grow wings and change. Their interests change somewhere in between. The guys on the outside have so much money to throw around. And you know that even when you have people who mean well, if you throw billions amongst them, there will be battle. So, Yes, they did some. The, the people have been doing it for a long time, understand the Nigerian politics. So they tried to, you know, destabilize the party. But we're able to, you know, push through. And what I told them is, see, we're in between an election. We are still at the tribal now. Can we just have a one house? We don't need all these battles. But you know that other people will try to push in, you know, sponsor people to destabilize the party. So that happened. If you are not succeeding, you have all the battles, you, you, all the battles we had. We wouldn't have had it. So it, sh it showed them that we're doing things right. That was where the battles were happening. But we're able to weather the storm. We push through. You understand? So when the whole election, post-election tribunal was over, then we had to deal with bigger issues. You can't be fighting multiple battles, you know, while we're fighting a critical battle. So I told them there were a lot of issues that needed attention at that time. Mm. But I said, we can't have to, we can't be fighting so many battles. Let's put this out together. Well, we push through the elections and the tribunal. Then when we are done with that, we do a lot of deep, uh, deep cleansing, you understand, which is what you're saying now. But I, I can tell you that at the end of the day, the party is going to come out better and stronger. If we can't have that, then most of us will not remain in the party. So it's, it's either we get it or nothing, you understand. And we are not going to stop. I can tell you a lot is happening behind the scene. And until we can revive the party to its old glory, you know, the honor, the, the type of values, you know, that was, the party was founded you know, upon, we are not going to rest. So it's a process we'll achieve it. But so Nigerians should be patient with Labour Party. Okay. We are still the party, the party of the people, the party for the workers, you know, party built on social justice. So with time, we'll get there. But well, this leader of the party, Mr. Peter Abi, seemed to be a bit silent, especially on the rancor going on at this time. He seemed not to be 
you know what they say in Nigerian palace, make blood not touch me. You know, he's just on his own. Yeah, he doesn't want to get involved. The, the, Why is he, that? He is the leader of the party. Yeah, he is the one that is supposed to set. Boy. Exactly. He's the boy. That's what leaders do. He's been silent. No, he's not right? silent. He's, he's, um, he's um, been... Um, he's not just talking. No, no, he's, he's, oh, he he's doing his sides. bit. No, he's doing his bit. He's doing his bit. He's consulting. He's, you, you, the, the, um, the, 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 we had um, a convention at um, the one that happened in Anambra recently. And you saw his spokesperson. He came out and he said... Um, he, he, he told us about um, the Tabi stance. On the convention that just happened, he said the agreement was to consult widely, talk to all the stakeholders, carry everybody along, and I'll be from what level to the national. That didn't happen. So, as long as that did not happen, it's not a party to what happened. You know, you, you don't, when as a leader, there are battles you don't fight outside. If you do that, people would think your house is not in order. So, like I mentioned, I said a lot is happening, you know, behind the scene. We can't bring the battle to the fore. We can't bring it to the public. Mm. Nigerians are looking, are looking up to the Labour Party as a thought force that will rescue Nigeria from all the challenges we are facing. So it's safe to say that uh, Mr. Peter Obi has distanced himself from the leadership of Julius Abure in no, the party? He, he's, um, he's, trying to, he's working with all the stakeholders to find a lasting solution you know, to the leadership tussle. You know, so that the party can still be on the side of the people. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, neither <laughs> here nor there. No, I am. <laughs> um, see, I, I, like I mentioned, I said Labour Party is bigger than any individual, bigger than Julius Aburi, bigger than anybody. Now, and I also acknowledge the, you know, the effort the NLC did in bringing the party. They are stakeholders, they are permanent members of the BOT. You can't throw them away. You know, you know they, they created, they founded the party. So they are stakeholders. And uh, Peter Obi was the poster boy. He brought the victory the Labour Party had in the last election. So he's, to me, he's the, he's, he's the leader of the party. So whatever we are doing now, we need to bring all the stakeholders. If there is any individual within the party who is going to cast shadows on the party, the stakeholders will sit down and find, you know, you, know, uh, you find the, a way to ease such people out of the system in such a way that there won't be rancor. A lot is happening. I'm sure within months would have would have a truth. Now, the party is getting bigger than it's not bigger than it used to be. Mm. Whatever is going on would get the external attention, which is what is happening. And some people have also benefited from the party. They are holding on. They don't want to leave. So we know what to do. We are doing all that we should do to return the party to where it should be and make sure that um, the you know. The, all the stakeholders are brought along in the process. With time, you would see that we are still with the people. So what you're saying in a nutshell is that party is working to ease out Julius Abure from the party. I mean, with, I, 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 that's what I can deduce from what you just said now. Uh, no, I would say the party is um, working so much to have um, the kind of leadership that would gain the support of the masses. And Julius Abure doesn't represent that right now. Uh, I, I think uh, the convention would decide that. I'm not, for me, personally. Yeah, of course, we're asking for your yeah, opinion. My own personal opinion, I'm not with the convention that just happened because I feel that does not reflect the true wishes of mm. the supporters of the party. So we are going to have a new one. That's what I feel, and that's what I feel should happen. Something that would reflect the wishes of all the members, because without them, we are not going anywhere. You, you said something the other time that you want to make Labour Party uh, the kind of party that people uh, will look up to, you know, yes, of course, you know, for a fresh breath of air, and that maybe was what happened before during the elections. Do you think that's still the case now? That people are still much interested in your party? People, are not, happy with, what people, people are not happy with the party because of this leadership issue, mm. and that's why we're trying to solve it. And that's why I said mm. no individual is bigger than the party. If the present leadership will make us lose our support base, we ease them out. Let me be categorical here. And, um, you know, we have been explicit. You said mm. it um, when you came. The reason why we have you here is so that we speak truth to power. Yeah. And that's what many Nigerians are yearning for. Mm. Is a brewery a problem to your party right now? It's not a problem to the party. The party is bigger than a brewery. 
Abu is not a problem with the party. He's the chairman. Yeah, and it appears many persons are not happy with him. Yes, he, he, nobody's bigger than the party. You I'll, have said, I'll, I'll you say, have said that repeatedly. Yeah. So it's, it's a process. If Abure, if Abure leaves the position of the national chairman today, he'll still be part of the Labour Party. Mm. He has contributed his quota. He pushed us through the election period. Let's even say his time brought, while he was chairman, Peter Abbey came in. So mm. that's still victory. So personally, you feel he should step aside. Your opinion? My opinion is, with the protest happening around, with the accusations and counter accusations, my opinion is he should step aside. Why we try to resolve things? Oh, oh, yeah. All right. Um, that was this. My evening talked about um, the issue with the labor um, NLC. Yeah. Um, and um, the leadership at the other time back and forth. There were protests. And um, yeah, there was a picketing of the Labour Party at court. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. after that, we heard Mr. Abure say some huge amount of money was missing. And people said, excuse us. Is there a small screen to cover yourself up? <laughs> Because there have been allegations and counter-allegations yeah. of embezzling. And you saying that kind of money was missing because the NLC picketed the office. Why would you even have that kind of money at your so, office? So, 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 so I was not there during the protest. protest. Why were you embarrassed that, with that kind of explanation? So, so, so I, was not, I was not there. Yeah. I don't have the facts. So I can't speak on it. Mm. But I mean, my own, I mean, what came to mind when I saw that was uh, when I saw uh, salaries was stolen. Mm. <laughs> what came to my mind Obviously, is why, you why, should you, why should you keep cash to pay staff? Mm. I mean, you have electronic payments, so all payments should go, should, should be electronic. I mean, that's what Nigerians, I mean, spoke against when you had local government paying cash. Yeah. So I don't think, I was not there, so I can't speak to the facts of the case. But my own, I mean, what just flashed in my mind when I saw that is why should you keep cash to pay? salaries mm. i mean you can do electronic electronic payment gives room for transparency mm. so why should you keep cash but so i don't have the fact of the case i don't know if money was stolen i don't have so i can't really speak on it but i'm just telling you my own personal i mean my personal opinion what flashed my of mind when course, i saw we that are talking to your personal opinion yeah, to huh. say that was ridiculous isn't i it? mean so i just felt no why should you keep um no 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 you can keep money mm. in your office for different things maybe yeah. they have constructions or mm. projects going on but what i read was the staff most salary. staff salary and right. I was like why should you keep staff salaries in the office right it should be i mean it should be done electronically all right There's so uh some stakeholders have actually advocated for a northerner to take up the leadership of uh, the party and i read um recently uh, an interview with uh, a leader one of the leaders of the liberal party professor party told mm -hmm. who said that it is really unreasonable for the leader of the party to be a southerner the chairman of the party to be a southerner, the deputy chairman of the party to be a southerner. You know, it really doesn't uh, augur well for the Labour Party as a national party. party. Your thoughts on that? Uh, that? You know, I said we, we, we are doing a whole lot of restructuring within the party. You, you noticed in the past few months, uh, uh, Mr. Peter Abia has been going, you know, round the north. He has been doing like a tour of the north. So mm. I would say Labour Party needs to do a lot of work in the north. So yes, um, we have Northerners at critical positions. The national chairman is from the North. I mean, the national secretary, sorry, mm. is a personal friend. He's from the North. Um, so, you know, we can go forth and back on who the national chairman, everybody, everyone has the right to contest for the but position. But you subscribe that a Northerner should take the position I will subscribe for competence, though I know politics is about representation. Exactly. So if uh, Mr. Peter Abe is the leader, the leader of the party, though he doesn't hold, like, by the constitution of the party, he doesn't have, like, an office, you know. The leadership is just honorary because mm. he, brought, he brought the fortune. Whatever victory we had the last election, whatever victory and favor Labour Party presently experienced came from the fortune of Peter Abe. So he's, he's, he's like an honor, honorary leader of the party. Um, so we can't really say um, constitutionally uh, Peter Obi from the Southeast is, has a constitutional office in the party. You know, so it's a little bit dicey. If he, had won, if he was the president, then we know the national chairman would have to go to the North. Okay. I agree to that. But whatever we have now is more like, um, like, a, like, like an understanding, you know. So I may not Nothing have like formal. 
not informal because he's, he's not the president right now. Mm. Uh, for you to be uh, maybe the, the leader in court, if you go by the constitution, they will tell you um, the Habia man, uh, His Excellency, and Alex Dr. Alex Soti should be the, the national, uh, the leader of the party. But everybody knows, you and I know, the strength of the Labour Party is with Peter Abiy. If you take that away, you know what happens. Mm. So maybe if we are going, the kind of convention I think we should have, the Northerners are free to come in. But if I have to speak strongly, I feel we, we need to do a lot of work in the North. So if we have a Northerner as a national chairman, it's not bad. Mm. If that would give us an inroad into the North, because the last election you saw the result we had in the South. I don't want to speak about what happened, but we know the result we had was not a reflection of, the, of what happened. Across Edo, Akwai, Bon, Rivers, the truth speaks for itself. I'm sure you saw even on TV recently, you saw some political players in Rivers. You know what they said because of their infight. A lot will still happen because they will still fight and the truth would come out. So we know, yeah, we had, last election we had the South. We won convincingly in the South. Uh, we had a you know, bit of victory in the North. So if we have a Northern chairman, it's not bad. And um, His Excellency, uh, Mr. Peter B is doing a whole lot of work in the north. You saw the Ramadan tour and all of that. So I'm sure, by God's grace, if everything works the way we would plan, <laughs> it will be victory for the party. It's, uh, it's interesting to put, um, at this time, to be asking for God's grace in what you do. <laughs> in, 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 in politics, that's not, I mean, they say in politics, it's not by uh, fine English and fine dress. You have to have your calculations right. right. But above that, even yeah. with the best calculation, it's still God who elect kings right. now. So yeah. <laughs> that's my belief. <laughs> Um, Evelyn just talked about you having a national spread and well, maybe Labour Party have having a different feel, you know, region-wise to what it is right now. Okay. Uh, but, you know, even beyond the north, you are from here, you know, yeah. Tuesday. You contested under uh, the really? flag of the party in the last election. Before we bring it home, many persons were even saying, oh, Shum State, Labour Party is non-existent. You are from here. Yes. So... Apart from the north, let's even talk about here. Knowing that the politics Labour Party is, is local. next to zero. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Your opinion on that? Hmm. Okay, hard talk, the truth. Um, we have a lot of work to do. Yeah. Because the wave of the election, yeah. the movement of the election is so, not. So, so this is it. Speaks to structure right now. So this is, is it. Yeah. Um, politics in Nigeria is a bit dynamic. It's not what you read in the test books. Mm. Mm. You have to study Nigerian politics to understand what's obtainable here. So I would say, uh, when you look at places like Lagos, Abuja, Lagos Island, Abuja, you have a lot of elites there. Votes there are not largely paid for. Nigeria, votes are paid for. We know that. Really? Come, yes. Please, let's, let's continue the conversation. <laughs> Structure works a lot. In, a place, in places like Lagos and Abuja, you have people, elites, making mm. informed decisions mm. because they know what they want. But when you go to other places, it requires people visiting people to tell them what to do. And in such situations, you need active structures to deliver. There are other things that are going to play in Nigerian politics. And that's why I said it's, it's a special ball game here. So I would agree that uh, we need to do a lot of um, structure building, a lot of grassroots work. Without that, nothing much can happen. And I'm that, talking about Oshun State, right? Yes, that's what I'm saying. We are back to Oshun now. Yeah, yes. So, you know, what you just brought out, what you just mentioned was why I said what I said in the beginning. That to have a, a strong party, a truly national party that will be strong at the grassroots, we need to test our strength, elect people right from the world level, see our party strength, who are the party members. You don't just choose national body and pick, you know, state organs and expect the party to deliver. You would fail if you have that. You understand? And I would say it. The victory Labour Party had in the last election was courtesy of Peter Obi. 
it was the it was the poster boy of the party he brought the support into the party so i'll give it to him and that's why i want the the leadership of the party to respect whatever the stakeholders are telling them because without the stakeholders there is no party there is no national if you push those who mean well out the old thing they are fighting on, fighting for the soul of the party, they won't see anything to fight on because nobody will come to buy the ticket of the mm. party. Honorable, you know why I talked about Oshu State? You, yes. You ran under the flag of the Labour Party. Mm. Many candidates did say in this same Oshu State that the moment some of you then have that, uh, you know, a mandate of the people, you were not voted into office, you abandoned the party, meaning you just wanted to ride on the wave of the obedient uh, movement, the movement of, at the national. And so since then, it has been a quietness. Lo a, lo a lot of people did. A symmetry standard of a lo quietness. A, lo a lot of people did that. I didn't do that. So I mm. can't speak for the rest. I've been a Labour Party member for about 10 years now. Mm. I paid and got my ticket before uh, Peter B came, into the, came into the race, even came into the party. So where's the structure in Russia? Okay, so this is what we're trying to fight. That's why I told you, like, behind the scene, I'm involved okay. in this process. Right. We are trying to, if we don't have good leadership, nothing will trickle down. Mm. If, we, if we have some people still holding on to the party for selfish purpose, we are not going to have, the kind of party we are trying to build would not happen. A lot of people will walk out of the party. Right. So if you see me saying it, a lot is happening behind the scene. We are trying to get the kind of leadership that will reflect, that will make the party grow. Right. And if you're going to make the party grow, you're not going to sit down in Abuja and go to Anambra and make, you know, and just, you know, and pick people and say you're going to run the party. Yeah. We don't want a system where the party is not strong at the grassroots. If you still want people like us to stay in the party to, you know, to achieve the kind of, you know, the vision that brought us into politics, then we have to start it from the grassroots. We have to start it from the world. We are working with a lot of people behind the scene. So you see, when you're going through the process, you don't see it. But when we get the result out of it and things start changing. So imagine if we have the World Congress, you know, elect credible people that they can work at the grassroots level and give us a structure, go to the local government and have credible people to the state, to the state level. Then we have the credible national. Then we know we have a truly strong party that reflects the will and wishes of the people, even within our own party context. All right. All right. Uh, it's a loaded conversation with uh, Mr. Gideon Aloba this Thank morning, uh, Labour Party chieftain. But right now we pause for a break. When we come back, we'll still speak to issues in the Labour Party. Do not go anywhere. Morning spring. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's still morning spring on Western Spring Television, where we say it as a tease. And we have a guest in the house this morning who has been saying it as a tease concerning the Labour Party issues, the crisis going on in the Labour Party, which is considered as a thought force uh, in the country. But then it seems there is some sort of imbalance in the party at this time, the leadership tussle, the all friction between the party and the Nigeria Labour Congress, the who is claiming ownership uh, of the party. Mr. Gideon Aloba is with us in the studio, he is a Labour Party chieftain and he ran uh, for the House of Representative in the last election. Uh, you know, good to know you're still here with us yes, and it's been a wonderful you. conversation with you yeah. um taking it on now to more issues you know when the labor party came on board and especially when you people had the victory you had in the last election talk about winning some seats in the house of representatives and also in the senate and that uh, uh, governorship seat won in abia state a lot of people predicted that there will be defection uh, from uh, these guys to the big party i mean the pdp and the APC in the course before the four-year term runs out. And we saw that play out in Enugu State where some lawmakers defected to the People's Democratic Party, I think about five of them. What are your thoughts about this? Are we still going to see more of that, uh, you know, come up in the course of, uh, you know, this term? Okay, that's, that's politics. What you saw there is politics. 
Some went out of the Labour Party, some came into the Labour Party. I'm sure in Abia State, I mean, you had some PDP members also, they came into the Labour Party. Is is a transfer season. Well, um, so just had a bit. Um, sometimes that's the beauty of um, democracy. You have people, you know, cross from, you know, a party to the other. But in my opinion, I don't think that has anything on the Labour Party. It's you don't at, think you're losing members as anything it still, on the It still boils down to, you know, the, the people in question, the, the, the elected members. You know, you can't, um, though the party can, you know, you know um, go against, you know, their actions and, um, you know, um, try to, I mean, recall them. I mean, what's it called? I'm trying to get the right word now. It happens in politics. Uh, the party knows what to, what to do, you know, to go against such if it happens. But like you mentioned... Do uh, they really know? Because it has happened. And nothing is happening. And they actually predicated their exit as a result of what is happening. The crisis, yes. In, yes, 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 the yes, crisis yes. in the Labour Party at you this know, time. You know, um, I possibly want to say so much on screen, mm -hmm. on TV, but, you know, I told um, the party leadership at the point, I said... If we don't need this crisis in the body, if we don't fix these issues, yeah. we may have defections. All they need to cite is internal party crisis. Exactly. And I told them the victory we just, the, 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 the little victory we recorded, we should manage it well so that it can catapult us into bigger victory the next election. You see, that's why you see people like us are trying, you know, working day and night to fix the issues. Now, uh, politics always with politics. For taking sides, you would have people who possibly come out to attack you for saying the truth. Even coming out to speak my mind, obviously I'll still get some backlash. But we're in politics for a reason is to change the narrative. For me, I tell people when you're going to politics, you know you have something doing. So politics is um, a means to change narrative to, you know, to build a better community society. So I feel if we are going into policies to change the existing narrative, if we have injustice happening within our party, we should speak to it, we should speak against it, you know. So, I, you know, I told the party leadership, if you allow this um, crisis to fester too long, you would have people decamping out of the party. I knew at a point when I saw the Enugu issue, I called people, I said, you see what we are talking about? Mm. Do you understand? But at the end of the day, you're not going to take human out of politics. Maybe they are realigning for, you know, their own selfish and personal interests. But we've given them a reason, an excuse, to step out. If, uh, is it Honorable Pella? The, you know, the, 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 the candidate, Pella is Delta. The, the man who, our candidate at the last election in Enugu, you know, they dragged the case to the Supreme Court. If you had won, he would have stayed back. Mm. Mm. You understand? So at the end of the day, you still see the human factor there. So now the party lost out at the gubernatorial seat, I mean, on the gubernatorial seat at the Supreme Court. Maybe they are decamping for survivor, but the party gave them a reason to decamp. All they needed to cite was internal crisis, which we had. But I think at the end of the day, we are going to come out stronger and better. And that's why we are doing all we are doing now. Yeah, it's filtering out that yeah. uh, there is internal rancor within the Labour Party. But we are just trying to correct the system. It's going to take a process, a process of self-correction, self-healing. You know, there are, they are going to be battles trying to get this thing, these things right. So whatever you see happening on the outside is a result of the, you know, the clean thing right. we are doing on the inside. So that's what I would say. All right. Um, two quick ones, uh, Mr. Loba. Firstly, you said, um, that's the bad way, humorously, you said, is the transfer season. <laughs> so players are allowed, in this case, to <laughs> so move in <laughs> and go out from the United <laughs> to a city mm. if it's allowed in Manchester. That's just on a lighter note. Okay. Now, um, you said it's beauty of democracy, yeah. but is that really beauty, though? Because one would say the mandate that the people, the voters, gave to those candidates through the vehicle mm. of the Labour Party has been taken <laughs> to another party. Is that really a beauty? And number two is the fact that uh, because of the wave of the obedient movement, the P2B factor, you know, many political watchers saw that some candidates that could not get the tickets of their party decamped to the Labour Party because the wave was big 
they rode on it and now they got the, you know, the mandate and now they are going back to where they came from. Isn't that the case? More like a use and dump. Somewhere, somehow. So there are good people in, in all these parties. No matter how bad they speak against the other established parties, mm. there are good people in those parties. Um, you know, so the, the Labour Party, yes, had a lot of people coming into it. Uh, have, have a lot of people coming into it because of um, um, His Excellency Peter Obi. Some came from the other party. Uh, but the moment they came into the Labour Party, I feel, um, I feel maybe to an extent, the party should sit tight, put his ass in order, and make them stay in the party, you know, adhering to the rules and regulations of the party. You know, it's actually against the law for someone to write to victory with your party and step out. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? But, but that's a caveat. Yes, yes, that, that, that was what I said, and that's why we, what, we've been, what, what we've been speaking against. Mm. You know, we, we are trying to make the party strong so that people don't step out of the party. When they step out, if you have internal crisis, there's nothing we can do because you've given them a reason to step out. All right. Um, yeah, you understand? So, you know, when really, I mentioned that they yeah. are good people, yes, yeah. even from the other party, if they see Labour Party, if I was in the wrong party and I see a party that reflects my value, yeah. if the party comes up, I would possibly go there. All right. So, we, if you see them coming from other parties to Labour Party, mm -hmm. maybe all the way, all the while they've been seeing themselves in the wrong place, so they mm -hmm. came to Labour Party. Really? And that's why I'm insisting if yeah. Labour Party doesn't put his house in order, a lot of great people will step out. All right. Um, before my colleague will come in here, um, uh, let's talk about um, National Assembly. Okay. You wanted to be a lawmaker yeah. at a time. Yeah. Um, you know, the people decided otherwise. Okay. Uh, before we go into that, are you still interested? <laughs> of course, I would run again. That goes in the great. next cycle? I don't know, but I would run again. Under the Labour Party? Hmm. But now I'm a member of the Labour Party. We for are now? Yes, we are trying to yes, please. I'll say it again. For now I'm a member of the Labour Party. We are trying to cleanse the party mm. so that it reflects our ideals. If we try so much and the party doesn't reflect our ideals, we'll step out. To where? We don't know. Till then, mm. till then we'll decide. But we are trying all we can. We are doing all we can. At a point, I told all the people who were walking, I was walking behind the scene. I told them, we need to change the path so that good people can remain. If we reflect the things we've criticized, our, criticized outside, and some people are holding on to the party, the party are the regular, and now allowing us to have the true change we desire to see. You think we want to be the part, the part of that corruption? Mm. No. You, you talked about the ideal of the Labour Party. Yes. For people, thousands oh. and millions that are watching you, that will watch you later, yeah. possibly when the clips get out, uh, what would you say is the ideal? I party. said it's a party that built idea? on social justice, it's a party for the people, it's a party for the masses, it's a party for all the workers, everybody in the labor force. Is the, the party was built, you know, to change the narrative. Is that Piaz is far from that right now? It's is going through a process, healing process. Healing but, process. Yes, it's going through a process. All right, the National yeah. Assembly, in your view, in which you are going to be a member of, yeah. how will you rate their performance so far? Uh, Ministerial appointments, confirmation, budget, oversight function. I'm sure that is your aim and ambition to do things better. But what you have seen thus far, what would be your assessment of the people you are aiming to join at some point? Uh, uh, if the people agree. I've not been impressed with activities for, I mean, we are eight months into this present dispensation. Mm. It's not just about the National Assembly. I think the totality you know um i i understand i know i didn't i didn't campaign for and i didn't vote for the apc government i'm a member of labor party i worked and voted for my party mm. but at the end of the day i want nigeria to succeed because if things go wrong it affects every one of us mm. i mean that was those were the things we campaigned for during the election that we needed a you need, we needed um, the kind of government that will come in and change the narrative so whatever we want to say, I want um, the country to succeed. But I must say that I'm not happy with everything happening. I also understand that the past eight years before this government was, was Nigeria was practically an autopilot. A lot went wrong. So I know the present government is trying its bit to heal a lot of wound. 
But overall, I'm still not impressed with what the National Assembly is doing because they are not, they are not in sync with the tune of the masses. You can't have a country where the masses are going through pains. You know, you tell the masses to, you know, go through austerity process. Whereas the National Assembly, the presidency, nobody is making austerity plans. Mm. The, the country needs to see you doing things before you can tell them. It seems they are not feeling the pulse of the people. You can't, you, you're, you, I mean, we have the leadership here and we have the masses so big. The pulse is very, very bad. People are going through pains, and you have our leaders showing a lot of a sensational display of you know, you know, of everything. Nothing has changed. They have even increased budgets for personal spending. So it's not just about the national assembly. Yeah, the national assembly had to pass some of these budgets, mm. but I feel everything they are doing is against what should be done. If you're forcing Nigeria to go through an austerity process, that things are bad, we should cut costs and all of that. But you're not seen to reflect that. I mean, that is in contrast to what they are preaching. So I'm happy with them. I am not happy with them. But you know, Labour Party also has some seats. I'm also not in the happy with the, I'm also not happy with the Labour Party representative exactly. at the National Assembly. So it's not just. I mean, I need. I mean, these are people voted for. I mean, voted for by the masses because mm -hmm. of Peter Obi, and some of them also have personal credibility. I feel they should go there to speak to power to represent the people. But for me, I've not seen that. And I would say it. You, you know, think saying they're not this, doing a good job? Yes, I'm not impressed with it. You know, whatever I'm saying here may possibly have some backlash, but I'll say it over and over again. Mm. I mean, I'm not impressed with even the Labour Party members at the National Assembly because they've not done anything differently. I've not had any of them speaking for the people. So to me, I'm not impressed by the whole National Assembly with what is happening right now. I know the federal government is trying a bit to change the narrative. It's a bit of slow process, but I can see that it's a, it's a bit of a listening government. They are doing a bit, you know, but overall, you still haven't met my past mark. All right. Yeah. Uh, it's a good place to end uh, the conversation with you, Thank you. this morning, Mr. Gideon. Uh, evening, Aloha. sorry. Just before, we will we'll still have you back before mm. evening runs off. Uh, this conversation will not be essentially complete without, um, we have less than a minute to go, by the mm. way. The Adelike's government have uh, used more than only a year in government. You are from here, yeah. you are from the, you know, the oh, axis sure. of the, uh, you know, uh, state. What would be your assessment so far? You are not in the same political party, but you are a son of the soil. I'm so still, you have I'm, a I'm, stake I'm, in the state. I'm still observing. Observing. Yes, right. I'm still observing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Gideon Aloba, Thanks Labor Party me. chieftain and the former uh, House of Representative, uh, House of Representative candidate in the last election. Thank you so much for coming. We Thanks appreciate your you. takes, your submissions, and it's been an insightful conversation with Thank you. you. Thank you. And people, this is where we pull the break on morning spring for today and for this week. Thank you so much for being a wonderful companion. We'll make a return on Monday for another interesting and exciting edition. You can watch uh, this particular episode on our YouTube channel at Western Spring Television. Connect with us on our different social media platforms at Instagram, Facebook, and X at Western Spring Television. My name is Evelyn Ohiola. Thank you for your time. And like I always say, Nigeria must work in our time, and it will work in our time. God bless Nigeria. Thank you. Again, God bless Nigeria. Femi Ojo is my name. We make a return, God willing by Monday next week. Enjoy the rest of your weekend reasonably.